Magnolia defenders back and uh, they're looking for a strong effort defensively so it's very important for us to get a good start offensively that way they won't stick nine ten guys on a line of scrimmage yeah, it'll be very interesting to see you know how things develop here as we, as we go um, you know it looks like Magnolia is going to receive um, you know we're operating under very very cramped quarters here tonight so we may lose some pictures down to, to the left of your screen and um, you know we'll do the best we can here but you know we're in here with uh, you know with Rick and Jerry doing the filming for the team and also coach Briggs and coach Matt Singleton here and we've been invaded by uh, scouts from Shady Side and I'm not sure why they would put the Shady Side scouts in the same booth with the Monroe Central coaches but I guess we'll live with it and if there's any fights break out here Andy you're in charge okay I'll try to take care of it uh, Jeff we always said the special teams is one third of the game and uh, that'll be the case tonight. Very important that we get a uh, deep kickoff and try to hold the Blue Eagles down around the 20 yard line. I think also it's very important for the Seminole team to get off to a good start and not fall behind by a couple touchdowns here early. TJ Stevens wearing number 51 this year will kick off. He boots it high and deep uh, down to about the 13 yard line. They're out to the 25 and brought down by Aaron Brown, number 30. Sophomore Eric Brown made a nice open field tackle on the play. Derek Keller, number two, was the return man for Magnolia. We also have a we have a Magnolia player very slow getting up, and he looks very, very unsteady on his feet. That's number 34, and that will be Joe Blatt, who also is one of the main running backs and leading returning rusher for the Blue Eagles and stuff and he looks very very wobbly as he got up and somebody must have laid a heck of a hit on him as he went down as uh, on the kick coverage as Black tried to make the block and you know, he appears to be very shaken let's take this time and try to set the Seminoles as far as who you're going to see defensively um, Number 51, T.J. Stevens, will probably be the starting middle guard. Uh, tackles will be number 55, Nate Schauber, and number 70, Randall Seifert. Looks like also we'll have uh, number 32, Aaron Cease, will be an end. And looks like the other end will be Tyler Shoemaker, number 64. Linebackers will be number 46, Chris Wilson, and number 88, Sam Miller. Defensive backs, number 44, Gabe Gordon, number 20, Eric Brown, number 21, Adam Conrad, and number 11, Josh Ishi. Okay, after that brief pause, we're back, and the, the injured Magnolia Blue Eagle, number 34, is Joe Blatt, you know, starting running back for the Blue Eagles, and also a starting defensive end, so that could be a very big factor, you know, before the game ever has its first play from scrimmage. As I look out there now, as the Seminoles lined up defensively, and I think I caught all those names uh, of the defensive personnel. A lot of people changing positions but it is a fairly veteran group. We have motion. Quarterback is Mason in the shotgun. He wants to throw. It's complete. Number two, Keller to the 42-yard line. First down. Jeff just looked like they flooded everything to their uh, left side, rolled the quarterback out, found an open man down the field for a nice 18-yard uh, gain. Mason, a very very highly regarded quarterback with a lot of people you know, back in his receivers and a very talented quarterback. And we'll get motion again by Kerr coming towards you. Mason to throw again. Some pressure across the middle. Complete. Another first down. That is number 11, the tight end, Josh Natale. Pick up of close to 15 yards and two big plays by Magnolia. Had a hand up there, Jeff, the line of scrimmage was able to get a hand on it, but a uh, nice bounce for Magnolia, like you said, for another first down. It looked, as you say, it looks like the ball was deflected. It went right to the receiver, and that was not 
I believe that was Natalie, if I'm correct, number 11. Josh right. Natalie, a junior. Very big team, this Magnolia. A lot of size. Mason to throw again. Gets some pressure, steps up, and be hit and dropped by Schauber. Short gain, maybe a yard. Uh, nice upfield pressure by uh, Aaron Cease. He's able to contain, force the quarterback up the middle, and uh, he's able to clean up there with Matt Schauber. So, as far as the defensive end, that's the kind of play we like to see as far as containment. A lot of pressure on this defensive group. You know, some veterans back there that played last year in Brown and Gordon and Conrad, even though Brown and Gordon are playing different positions. But, you know, some pressure on them as Magnolia's tried to throw the ball three times thus far. Two completions and a scramble. Second nine, they'll run it for the first time. The fullback, number 41, is Smith. He'll get about seven yards. And this will set up a third and short. Big hole there, Jeff. Uh, nice job by the uh, Blue Eagle offensive line. Going to do half a lot better job than that, especially on third down and about two and a half yards. So uh, see if we can hold him here. And we might be in four down territory already. So uh, let's try to get a good stop here on third down. Last year's Magnolia team, even for a seven-win team, struggled to score points, but they moved it well. They give it to number three, and he stacked up. That is... Talkington, Ted Talkington, a sophomore. Fourth down and less than a yard. Nice job out there by Tyler Shoemaker, stepping that up for a, about a one-yard gain. And as you said, Andy, four down territory, the ball just inside the 35-yard line. Very early on here, a big defensive play for the Seminoles. Mason to sneak, and appears that he has the first down. He's very close. Lance and I used to have a few contests last year, and uh, I'll have to go with you on that one, though, Jeff. I think he does have the first down also. And they'll not even measure. Three first downs for Magnolia as they have put together a very nice drive starting back down about their own 25. We've played three minutes. And early pressure on a very hot, humid evening, and conditioning could be a, a major player in this game during the second half. They'll run a sweep, number three. Talkington breaks a tackle, and he'll be going to the end zone. Touchdown and a late flag. 33 yards and a touchdown for the Magnolia Blue Eagles, the sophomore Talkington. A late flag on the play is going to be a, after the play on Monroe Central. I'm sorry Jeff got caught up in the action around uh, the middle of the field, but uh, they was able to make a nice block on the defensive end to spring uh, Talkington downfield. And uh, as I said, I was caught by the action, looked like be a personal foul on T.J. Stevens. Very uncalled for. He's went to the sideline. Tyler Shoemaker will move to middle guard. Dan Miller will come in and play the defensive end. And we get the signal, personal foul, and and T.J. Stevens, T.J. Stevens has been ejected from the game. So not a good start for the Seminoles here with the Magnolia. A very quick scoring drive and then get a personal foul penalty that will result in an ejection, which also will, will put T.J. out of next week's game. Number one, Aaron Long, will try the extra point. The penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. The kick is right through as Aaron Long, a soccer player, is a big weapon for this Magnolia team. 8-38 remaining first quarter. Magnolia takes the opening kickoff and drives it down for a score. Magnolia 7, Monroe Central nothing. Seven nothing Magnolia deep for the Seminoles. Conrad number 21, Cease 32, and number 20, Eric Brown. Aaron Long will prepare to kick. And 
a little pressure on the Seminole offense to respond to that early score. Right, Jeff. Uh, we give give up seven points here on the opening drive, so uh, we got to keep our heads up, get the ball on offense, and uh, let's go from there. Kicks a high drive, cease at the nine. He's the 20. Up the middle to the 34-yard line, so pretty decent field position. Nice return by Aaron Cease. Nice job. Just taking what he got right up the middle, Jeff. 35-yard line. Good starting field position. A lot of times you see return people try to dance around a little bit and you just explode up the middle and get what you can. Seminole offense will be triggered by new center, John Michael Spielman, number 50. Tyler Schumacher is the guard, number 64. Randall Seifert, number 70. Sean 80 will now be forced into action at a tackle, number 72. And Nate Schaubert, number 55. A lot of people tight. We'll throw the ball out to Conrad. Quick out, sprints to the outside. And will be pulled to the ground, face mask, and I believe everybody in the place was able to see that one. And we hope that Adam Conrad is not injured on that. And that is a definitely a, a blatant 15-yard penalty. Completion's going to go for five yards. And that'll be 15 yards on Magnolia. Uh, looks like Conrad's all right, Jeff. That's the main thing. And as everybody's seen at the stadium, it was a uh, flagrant foul. That'll give us a uh, first down and uh, excellent now just inside the 45 yard there, line. On the in the 15 yard penalty on the touchdown play, Magnolia must not have taken the the penalty on the kickoff because they did kick it from the 40 yard line, so that may not be the rule. But first down, Seminoles. Three receivers to the right, shotgun for Joyce. On third, quick out to Wilson. Cuts back into traffic. That's going to be a very conservative five-yard pickup, but, you know, five yards on first down, not bad. Jeff, that's just as good as a uh, five-yard running play, and uh, essentially that's all it is. Uh, just a little bit of a quick toss type play and uh, positive yardage, and uh, Magnolia's got to uh, respect the uh, pass a little bit now. Well, I think as you look at the seminal offensive line, you know, very much undersized. They're not going to be able to line up and pound it to people like we've seen Monroe Central teams do in the past. George back under center. Now we'll give the ball to Gordon, and that's why as number 66 for Magnolia was right there to stuff up the play. That is Joe Weaver. He's a three-year veteran on that line. No gain for Gordon. Third down and a long six. Ball at the 41-yard line in Magnolia territory. George will stay under center. Brown wide left. Conrad wide right. George down. Tries to throw it. It looked like his arm was hit by the linebacker Smith. Trying to go to Brown on a slant. Fourth down now at the 41-yard line, and it appears that the Seminoles will punt the ball. Well, as you can see, Jeff, way too much pressure in there. Didn't have time to throw the ball, and uh, that was one of our better linemen, so we have to uh, get better pass block. I, I think one thing, too, Magnolia's going to stack some people up there and go and say, hey, can you, can you stop us? We're going to get your quarterback before you can throw it. Gordon will be in punt formation. Line drive kick. Smith will take it at the 14 and be brought down by that's Aaron Brown once again. You know, two good special teams tackles at the 19 yard line, and that's where Magnolia will take over on their second possession. Well, I guess now with the, with the ease that Magnolia drove the ball down the field first time, the, the big goal now is just for the Seminole defense is to make a stop. Right, right here on first down. Uh, very important. Mason under center. He's going to give to Coe on the reverse. And we're going to get a flag down behind the play. And the ball's loose. No signal. Manure Central football. 
number 85, Dan Miller, looks like on that play. The penalty behind the play will be a holding call declined. So game's first defensive break is going to go to the Seminoles on the fumble recovery by the sophomore, Dan Miller. Seminoles in great shape at the Magnolia 26-yard line. Okay, maybe just what we needed, obviously, Jeff. Excellent field position. First and ten. Now you have to take advantage of it. Let's see if Monroe Central comes out with that uh, short little passing game that they had some success with early. Four wide receivers. Shotgun for Joris. Movement, no flag. Joris throws, and again, it's deflected. And I think that might have been number 41, Smith, once again. That's his second deflection. And he's a veteran, senior, I believe, in there, you know, uh, with a leading tackler a year ago. Magnolia with a lot of seniors. Uh, he just came up from his linebacker position. And, uh, he's unblocked. He's got his hands in the air. He's able to knock that down. So second down and 10 at the 26. We get uh, number 86, Kenny Robinson, wide to the right. Conrad wide left. George wants to throw. He's going to throw it up in the air for Robinson. Not able to get there. Single coverage by Mason. Just the, the little corner fade. You know, throw it up and let the six foot four Kenny Robinson try to go up and get it, but not able to make connection. So that's going to bring up third and ten. Right, Jeff. Uh, it's a nice uh, thought. Try and take advantage of his uh, height out on that uh, flag pattern, but wasn't able to connect. Eric Brown, wide right, Conrad left. Conrad's going to draw a lot of attention over on that side. We're going to look to the right. Throw it out here to Cease. He'll step away from one and stay on his feet and get about three yards to the 23-yard line. Hey, Cease, nice job after the initial hit, hit to get a positive yard, but does bring up fourth down. And uh, I'm not sure who kicks for us, Jeff but I'm sure we're out of field goal range. And yeah, this would be about a 40-yarder, and in high school ball, that's not going to happen a lot. Number 11, Josh Ishi in on his fourth down and about seven. We're going to get three receivers to the right in Ishi, Brown, and Wilson. Conrad has single coverage to the left. The snap is high. George able to get it. Get down a little screen play to Gordon, but it's going to be tough. We got to have a flag on the play. The play is going to lose about three yards. It's a clipping call against Monroe Central, and it will be declined. And Magnolia will hold on downs and take over on the 27-yard line. So Seminole's not able to take advantage of that early fumble recovery. Uh, Jeff, we uh, find out early on if you can't uh, get any positive yards on first down, you get yourself in too much of a hole. And uh, that's what happened on that series of plays. And uh, like you said, we turned the ball over, weren't able to capitalize. And uh, hopefully... Uh, have a strong defensive effort here and uh, take advantage of uh, field position. And we'll try to take, try that old fumble play again. Mason, uh, maybe a, a missed handoff. We're going to get a flag down. And the Mason will gain a couple of yards. We had a flag on the play. And usually holding. And that is the call. I think that was a, a missed handoff, it looked like, Andy. Or maybe a back that went the wrong way. Well, I'm not sure. Or the uh, quarterback the wrong way. It, it looked like uh, the play that had a chance for some positive yards, even if it was a busted play. And then, the, uh, of course, the uh, never offensive lineman uh, reached out and grabbed him under a central jersey. So that, that'll take him back. Ball about the 15-yard line now. It's 10 yards from the point of the foul. And that the point of the foul is a couple yards in the backfield, so it amounts to about a 12-yard penalty. First down and about 22. 
Backs in the eye. Mason wants to throw. Has some pressure and will be sacked. Seifert and Dan Miller on the play back at the 11-yard line. Tell you what, Loss Jeff, of four. I expect big things out of Seifert this year. I watched him do things last year. Just a uh, natural uh, lineman. And a uh, big play there for the Seminole defense. But the key to a good pass defense is a good pass rush. Exactly. And Quarterback can't throw on his back. That's the first time we've seen that tonight with real good pressure. Second down and about... 30. Obviously, a uh, passing situation that, that brings up uh, maybe a draw or screen play, though. And Magnolia is going to spend a timeout on this second and a really about 25. So, timeout Magnolia. 4.37 less in the first period. Magnolia, 7, Monroe Central, nothing. After the Magnolia timeout, Blue Eagles will put it in play deep in their own territory. The ball is at the Magnolia 11. It's about as they redo the scoreboard to second and 27. They'll try to run the ball. Talkington. Seifert makes the play at about the line of scrimmage. And yeah. no gain. Once again, uh, the senior, Randall Seifert, steps up and makes a nice play. Well, with only three seniors on this team, you know, you know Seifert, Eric Brown, uh, Aaron Cease, you know, have to step up and really do a lot to help some of these younger kids along in the early going. Third and 27 now. See whether Magnolia tries to put it up or if they just run a conservative play and, and go ahead and punt it away. Uh, we might watch for a screen, Jeff, just to maybe get themselves out of the hole a little bit. They we'll have three see. receivers to the right, and there's a short pass, and it's intercepted. Tyler Shoemaker as makes the interception. The officials are talking about it, but I think they will stand. It is an interception. And the second Magnolia turnover. And once again, Monroe Central is put into very good field position. But unlike the last time, you know, we need the Seminoles to take advantage of it. They're going to put the ball in play at the 21-yard line on the Tyler Shoemaker interception. Okay, very important here on first down, Jeff, like we said before, to get some sort of positive yardage on first down. Joris is back under center. They'll toss it. Wilson, try to cut back, fight to get back even near the line of scrimmage. And looks like they'll lo loss of one yard on Christopher Wilson's first carry of the game. That is just a second rushing play for the Seminoles as we played almost a full quarter compared to seven pass attempts. Okay, Jeff. Uh, Who would have thunk it, Andy? <laughs> Let's try to get some positive yardage here on second down. Joris going toward the corner of the end zone. Overthrown just a little bit. Conrad on a corner pattern. Uh, defender number two, Keller, and just not able to hook up. Yeah, but decent pass protection. You know, started to get the breakdown a little bit there, but you know, not too bad here. You know, in the early going, but um, you know, again, an incomplete pass after a loss on the play, and third and eleven. Just Seminole offense, just really, you know, not able to get anything going. All right, uh, Jeff. Uh, obviously, four down territory again, so uh, we might uh, try to get half this on third down, even though it's not a huge amount. But uh, see if we can get here on third down. Seminole is only with three plays of positive yardage thus far. Joris, the throw out for Gordon. A lot of traffic out there and nowhere to go for Gabe Gordon on the screen. Well defended and well read by Magnolia. And it's going to be a loss on the play back to the 20, it's like about the 28 yard line, 29 yard line and fourth down. A loss on the play of about seven yards. Jeff, we knew uh, the Blue Eagle defense would be strong, and uh, that's exactly what they are tonight. And we're going to get a flag, and what this is going to be, I'm quite sure, is an illegal substitution penalty, as what the Seminoles had 13, 12 men in the huddle, and the one late getting out to the sideline, and 
once the ball is put ready for play, you know, you have to have everybody out of there. And one of the people was late going to the sidelines. That five-yard penalty for illegal substitution will back up the Seminoles even more back to the 34-yard line. Great, Jeff. Uh, I'm impressed uh, with your knowledge of the game here. Nice call. I didn't catch that one. I try to get uh, one right every year. So I've, I've wasted it in the first quarter of the first game. So after the interception, fourth down and long. Seminoles need down to about the 11-yard line for a first down. Gordon to punt and which angle for the sideline and it's fielded for some reason back there by the deep man and he'll be buried at the five yard line and fumble the football that is unbelievable very poor judgment fielding the ball Jeff obviously inside the five the rule is uh, don't field inside anything inside the ten and to go along with that he did fumble the ball so uh, and I They're could, trying to let us back in this game, Jeff. And, I could uh, not see who recovered the fumble from the North Central, but the Seminoles with their third defensive turnover in the first quarter will now put the ball in play at the six-yard line. Unbelievable. Try Wilson on a dive. Maybe a yard. They'll put him down at the five-yard line. Pick up by one yard by Chris Wilson. Second and goal from the five. Just nothing there, Jeff. Uh, brings up second down. We're going to once again get five wide receivers. Three to the right, two to the left. George Salone in the shotgun. Whistles will kill this play. Movement along the mag defensive front of Magnolia. And I think we're going to have defensive encroachment on the Blue Eagles. We'll see if there was any movement as the officials talk about it. See some uh, Monroe Central players applauding. They'll give us half the distance. Take us down inside the uh, three-yard line, Jeff. Just inside the three. Just unbelievable everything that's going wrong for Magnolia. But Monroe Central still not able to take advantage of it. But this is their best opportunity thus far. George, quick throw for Yoho on a quick screen, but a block was not picked up there, and it's going to be a loss back to the eight-yard line. That, Andy, is the third passing play that has been completed but went for negative yardage. Third and goal with the eight. You always kind of worry about your offense in the early in the season, and I think we're seeing that on both teams here tonight. Right, Jeff. Uh, let's keep our heads up, though, and uh, we've still got good opportunity to make a score here. George under pressure. Ball was deflected, I believe, going for the short man, Gordon. Incomplete. Fourth down from the eight. Twelve seconds remaining in the first quarter. Monroe Central will spend a timeout. And yes, we're still in the first quarter. And a lot has happened. And the decision, you know, do you try a field goal here or do you try to get the eight yards and get it in the end zone? You know, that's a decision that has to be made. Uh, Jeff, if it were me, uh, very important to get some points on the board tonight here early. Capitalize on some of these uh, three Magnolia turnovers. We'll see how the decision is made here. Uh, and I wasn't able to see over there to see if the uh, field goal team was ready. Uh, if, if there is a field goal, Chris Yoho would be the kicker. But we'll see what happens here in the early going. Magnolia back on the field defensively. Officials whistling there to try to get the Seminoles back. Each team has used a timeout. As I said, we're still in the first quarter with 12 seconds remaining. Magnolia leading 7-0. And we've had quite a bit go on here already. And 
it looks like referee Butch Minka Meyer is ready to signal the ball ready for play as he waits for the Seminoles to come back out and they are now ready to go and signals ready Seminoles will go straight to the line and it's going to be a play they're going to go for it on fourth down from the eight Jordan Joris is facing some pressure quick out and complete tried to get Yoho on an out you know, connections not made and for the third time after a Magnolia turnover deep in their own territory Seminoles unable to take advantage and nice uh, design play Jeff just weren't able to connect but uh, like I said rolling down 7-0 and uh, keep her heads up, play some good defense. Three and out, get the ball back, and uh, let's go from there. Let's play ball here on first down. Mason was trying to sneak, and he fumbles the football again and able to get it back. And that will take us to the end of period number one. Magnolia able to retain possession. We've played one period. Magnolia seven, Monroe Central nothing. Woodsfield Marathon sells pure gasoline, diesel fuel, kerosene, and now you can get your hunting license there, too. Of course, they're pure Seminole fans. Join these Woodsfield Marathon fans in their dining room for a fabulous lunch, supper, or snack. Try hot pizza, delicious Caesar sandwiches, salads, and more. Then top it all off with Kirk's homemade ice cream. The Hawks invite you to follow the Seminoles throughout the football season and follow the Knolls to the marathon because they know... Marathon has the best pizza and ice cream money can buy. Ormet Credit Union is exploding with membership opportunities. Anyone living, working, or attending college in Belmont or Monroe counties can join Ormet Credit Union. You can celebrate our expansion whether you're college-bound, raising children, or nearing retirement. Just some of the financial services now available to you include mortgage, car, and home equity loans. Stop by our locations in Clarington, Hannibal, or St. Clairsville for your membership application. And celebrate your financial options at Ormet Credit Union because our commitment is you. All right, we're back ready to start period number two. Magnolia, second down and eight at their own 10-yard line. They'll hand the ball to the tailback. And there's another fumble. It's loose. And it's going to be the fourth Magnolia turnover of the game. Tyler Shoemaker, I believe, has it. Eric Brown had an opportunity there to scoop that one up and go to the end zone but not able to pick it up. Tyler Shoemaker makes the play. Magnolia with five possessions, one great touchdown drive, and four turnovers. And now Seminoles will take over at the Magnolia 2. Have you ever seen anything like this, Andy? Never seen anything like it, Jeff, and I guess I was caught up in the game a little bit there. I was screaming, yelling them, and I was hoping the defense would pick it up and run in for a score because uh, at, as of this point, we weren't able to convert offensively. No central negative yardage in the first quarter. They're going to power inside Gordon, and he may get half of the two yards he needed. You know, the passing game down this end of the field, we don't have a lot of field to work with. You're know, probably not going to be very effective, so you know, I'd say pound it in there three more times if necessary. Uh, right, Jeff. Another thing I might add is uh, show a little uh, confidence in your offensive line right here. And uh, let's punch it in. This will be double tight ends. It will be a power formation. And busted play. George wants to throw and will be sacked. Play action and there's no one there to throw it to. George will go down back about the five yard line. That's his first sack. He is separate tonight and third and goal from the five. Not sure what he's trying to do there, Jeff. Uh, wasn't able to see if he was looking for someone to tight end across the middle, but uh, obviously wasn't there. And uh, at least George did the right thing, uh, not throwing the ball into coverage. Maybe should have threw it away, but uh, let's go from here. Third down. Third goal from the five. Backs and an eye. A little trouble getting aligned, and 
play clock running down. George will spend a timeout, their second timeout. And you really got to make sure you don't suffer a penalty down here and lose an opportunity. You've already had three golden opportunities and have been able to get zero points. And you really need to punch one in the end zone here. 10-27 remaining in period number two. We noticed down here uh, between quarters that the Magnolia player who was injured early, number 34, Joe Blatt, was sitting at the bench down here you know, with their trainer. He's now got up and moved around a little bit, but there's a, you know, a trainer staying pretty close to him. And Steve had his bell rung on the first play of the game, really on the opening kickoff, and as wobbly as he was, I'd be very surprised if we see him back anymore tonight. Even though he may be feeling okay now, you have to be careful with those head injuries. But he's, you know, appears he's not going to play anymore. You know, at least in the first half, but, and very likely not the game. So uh, now, right. third down. Right, Jeff. Getting back to the injury. Uh, he is a senior. This is the first game of the season, so uh, no sense taking any chances. He's got a nine-game schedule ahead of him. A good point. So now, you know, Seminole offense badly in need of some confidence. Third down. We'll get a slot to the left. George wants to throw, pitches it to Cease. And the center offense continues to go backwards. Not sure, Jeff, but I thought I seen a couple of seminal offensive linemen move out to the outside like they was going to lead the play upfield, but as soon as they released, uh, the defenders came right upfield and was able to uh, make a big play for uh, negative yardage. Uh, you know, there's something that didn't look right on, on that right from the go. Magnolia, as you said, you're putting a lot of people up there and they're coming hard. And if Simmel's not able to do something to loosen things up, it's going to be a long night for the offense. It's already been a long night. Fourth down now, gold the ball back at the 15-yard line. Snaps a little bit high. George going for the end zone. Conrad, there's a touchdown! Yeah! Adam Conrad on a great throw from Joris, and finally the Seminoles take advantage of a turnover and get it to the end zone. And I'm not sure, Andy, what was more unbelievable, the fact that Magnolia's turned it over four times or the fact that the Seminoles were close to not taking advantage of it four times in a row. But you know, that all goes for naught. You know, it's now 7-6. to six. What's more amazing to me, Jeff, is uh, as many bad plays as we've made uh, for them to leave that post pattern one-on-one -on -one with uh, one of the fastest kids in the valley. Yeah, the ball was thrown. flag pattern, I mean. Yeah, thrown up there, and Conrad went up and grabbed it, and he was able to beat the defender and Chris Yoho to attempt to snap, and it's a low snap. Yoho will pick it up and have nowhere to go. So the point is no good on a high snap, but at 9.32 remaining in the first period, at least a little something for Seminole fans to cheer about as the Magnolia lead is now 7-6. to six. Now you're right, Jeff. It really doesn't matter how bad we've played offensively as of this point. we got ourselves right back in the game right now and rolling down one point. And uh, maybe that gives us a little uh, momentum, a little psyched up on defense. Right now, through two and a half minutes into the second period, by my count, you know, Monroe Central offensively would have a net of about zero yards you know, with, with losses and, and that. And they've also thrown the ball 13 times and only run it six. But, you know, you know, passing has not been very effective up until that play right there to Conrad. And the running game has not been effective, so you know hopefully they'll be able to find something here and, and, and loosen things up. But you know, how much more can you ask defensively, or you know ask out of Magnolia to you know, give you opportunities? You know Magnolia driving the ball down the field looked great on their first possession, but they've turned it over on four successive times that they've had the ball. Right, Jeff. And let's give our defense a little bit of credit here. Uh, yeah, the Magnolia turnovers, but somebody's there on the other side of the ball causing those turnovers. So. Uh, I want to be sure to mention a good effort there defensively, all except for the first series. Spoken like a true defensive lineman. But that, yeah, that is a good point there. They didn't just lay it on the ground. You know, something happened there that caused some of those fumbles. And, and uh, now it looks like Michael Joris will assume the kickoff duties. The 
kick is very short. It's going to hit the ground and bounce around and be picked up about the 20-yard line. And there's another tackle. This time it is Adam Conrad. Good coverage. And the Magnolia Blue Eagles will take over at their own 26-yard line. 87, Nick Goddard, the return man. You really like to see that, Jeff. Uh, Conrad, the guy who scored a touchdown, hustles down, makes a big play on special teams. Shoot. We're able to hold him to the three yards on first down. It's a good start. We'll just take that. Looked like one of the Millers and Conrad up making that play. 85 is Dan Miller and 88 is Sam Miller. Dan the defensive end, Sam is a linebacker. We're going to get a flag. Flag on the play, dead ball. It's a dead ball encroachment call against, against Magnolia, so that will back cost them five yards and bring up second down now in about 12. Second down and 12. And that is the third penalty for Magnolia to go along with four turnovers. They'll spread the field now. Mason, the quarterback and the shotgun, have two receivers left and two receivers right. And get motion to make three receivers to the left. And he'll give it to the fullback, Smith. He'll be hit. First contact, I believe, was Schauber. And then finished off by, looks like Dan Miller. Yeah, like I heard the coaches say, to get her in the boot there. Nice read by uh, 55 Schauber on the play. Brings up third and eight. Third and 12. Third, down Third and 12. 12, yeah, my fault. Ball resting at the 24. Four-man front for the Seminoles, looking for a probable passing situation. Mason doesn't want to throw. Across the middle for Smith, a little high and incomplete. Incomplete pass. So a nice job, <laughs> Seminole defense, to make the stops, and they're going to get the ball back in pretty decent field position. Excellent job, Jeff. Uh, just what we... Uh, Guess what we asked for? Three and out. Defensively, that's all you can do. Three and out. And even if the, the, the running back Smith would have been able to make that catch, there was a defender there, and I think they would have been able to make the play short of the first down. But you know, we'll never know as the pass was incomplete. Number three, I believe that is, Talkington. Sophomore will be back in punt formation. Brown and Conrad deep. I spoke last year, uh, Good Jeff. Snap. Good snap. These punt. exciting returners from Monroe Central. And a fair catch by Conrad. And we get some extra cricketers on the other side of the field. And we're going to get a couple of late flags. I was about to make the point there that the fair catch by Conrad may have been a little bit of a, a, of a weak fair catch signal. But it looked like uh, Gabe Gordon and a Magnolia player was tangled up on the far side away from the play. A couple flags come in. And this is some things that, you know, tonight is really uncharacteristic of the Seminoles with the penalties. Personal foul, Magnolia. And they didn't signal offsetting, so I think this is just going to go against Magnolia, I believe. Right, Jeff. Uh, Gabe Gordon, good kid. Uh, I wouldn't think he'd be mixing it up. Uh, so uh, we did get the 15-yard uh, personal foul and penalty. Again, a mistake by a Magnolia Blue Eagle, and that's going to cost Magnolia some field position because that was a really a nice punt, and they had Monroe Central backed up to the 35-yard line, and now the Seminoles going to put the ball in play. Again, I think this is the fifth time that they've put the ball in play in Magnolia territory. I've said this several times tonight, Jeff, and I'll say it again. Uh, very important on first down. Get some type of yardage, positive yardage. George wants to throw. Quick out for Conrad. Incomplete. George's pass is incomplete for Conrad. Second down. Unofficially right now, Michael George, 7 and 14 passing. For about 12 yards net. 7 of 14 for 12 yards. Second and 10. Yoho to the left. Conrad to the right. George, a lot of pressure. Steps up. Wants to try to run. Tries to get to the outside. We'll get a couple of yards and stay on his feet and get close to the 45-yard line. 
Give Michael Joris four yards on the scramble. Stop was made by number 66, Joe Weaver, and number four, Craig Mason. Yeah, real nice job of stepping up there by Joris. Shows his maturity there. Rolling outside, sticking his head down, getting four yard gain. But some positive yardage. We've not seen a lot of that thus far today. Third down and six. George again, shotgun. Three to the left. George to throw. Going for Ishing, incomplete. The ball was underthrown. Fourth down, and that will bring up a punt formation. Forty-one Smith, two Cower will be deep. Gordon in punt formation. Good snap. Kicks away. It's a line drive. It's going to be taken by Smith at about the 10. Gives a little ground. Some good special teams coverage. Cease and Dan Miller among the tacklers on the special teams. Magnolia will now put the ball in play at their own 17-yard line. I'm not sure why he made that catch here again, Jeff. Uh, ball certainly would have rolled in the end zone. That's the second time tonight we've seen Magnolia punt returners use what's really poor judgment on plays. One time it resulted in a fumble, and that time it's probably going to cost them you know, about three yards of field position. Mason sends his loan back in motion. They'll have five wide receivers. They're going to try to get the quick out, and it's incomplete. Number 87, Goddard. He took a hit from Eric Brown, and incomplete. Six minutes, 27 seconds remaining before halftime. Magnolia leading this game 7-6. to six. Very important, Jeff, right now. Like you said, second quarter is winding down. Get a stop here. Get another crack out of here before half. Well, at the, at the very worst, if you go into halftime trailing 7-6, to six, you know, you, you really you know, have to feel like it's not been too bad even though you have had the opportunities to take the lead. Mason wants to throw. He was going for Natale on the slant. Adam Conrad makes a nice defensive play. Jeff, he was right there. Read that play all the way. Nice defense play by number 21, Adam Conrad. So third and 10. Well, ever since that first possession, which Magnolia drove for a touchdown, we've seen a, uh, a whole lot of not much offensively by both teams. Or, Jeff, a whole lot of defense by both teams. That is true. And the defense you know, should take some credit. Mason is under center. He's going to look downfield, just throw it up long, and there's nobody there. Gabe Gordon, a nice job on the intended receiver. Natalie and Gordon did not let the man get deeper than him. Excellent job by Gordon, only a sophomore. Very intelligent for a sophomore and... Uh, that will bring up uh, a punt formation for the Blue Eagles. We stand to gain excellent field position, but Jeff, like you said, the first time we saw this boy punt, he put his foot into it. There's the snap. And another, a very good punt by Talkington. It's going to hit and bounce dead, and the about the 42-yard line, but there is a flag on the play. Jeff, uh, 76 from Monroe Central. Uh, Curtis Merrick, freshman, wasn't able to get off the field in time, and I think they called Monroe for 12 minutes on the field, but I'm sure it's only a five-yard penalty. We'll let the officials sort that out. And not a good kick. Only about a 25-yard punt. The game ball still not has been claimed. That winning number. So let the officials. And you're never, you're really never sure what's going to happen when the officials stay in and talk for this long. And we'll.
we'll see what the, the man in the white hat is Butch Minkemeyer and he's picking up the flag there is no flag which leads to the question Andy if there's no flag why did he throw it well maybe he got overruled by a uh, side judge over there and maybe the uh, Monroe Central player was able to get off in time <laughs> We're going to get a stoppage in play, and they're going to send both teams to the sideline for a break on this very humid very evening. Six minutes and five seconds remaining, first half. Magnolia 7, Monroe Central 6. After the officials' timeout, Monroe Central will put the ball in play at the Magnolia 42. Once again, excellent field position by the Monroe Central Seminoles. They'll have a lot of receivers spread out. Defense late adjusting for Magnolia. George looks downfield, going deep. Conrad will make the catch. Complete, that's gonna be a pass interference penalty. And complete. I'm sorry, Jeff, get a little excited. Uh, still root for my Seminoles. I don't know if I'm supposed to uh, announce. You're allowed. The ball is here, if that's the word. But, the play uh, goes from the 42 down unbiased. to the, see where they put the ball down at the 9. That's 33 yards on that completion. It was pass interference. Adam, just throw the ball up and let your speedy wide receiver and Conrad run under it. That's Conrad's third catch for 53 yards and a touchdown. Seminoles now at the 9-yard line, first and goal with a chance to take the lead. To amazingly take the lead after so many early opportunities. So let's, uh, let's give credit, as you said, to the defense. Defensive coordinator David Sherman you know, on some adjustments. And now the offense to take advantage. George, he's going for the end zone, and this was not a good toss. And it's in intercepted. <laughs> this turned into a not such good play, so after one positive play, So the first seminal turnover. Jeff, as I heard from uh, one of the men in the booth here, uh, I guess the boy from Magnolia was a valley leader in interceptions last year, so uh, so not surprising that he was in the right place to make that play. Right. Now the defense once again, Magnolia to their own 20, 5:33 before halftime. Mason back under center. They'll go to the fullback, Smith. He'll break a couple of tackles, get across the 30, and pick up a first down. Seifert able to break through initially. Uh, wasn't able to wrap up and bring him down. I'm sure he'd like to have that one back. First down, ball the 31. It initially looked like the play was going to go for very little yardage, but you know, Smith running hard, able to get across the 30-yard line and get a first down. Uh, that's, I believe, Magnolia's first first down since their opening possession. And I have them for four first downs in the game. I think you're right, Jeff. But uh, we had him stop. But we can't do anything about it now, so let's uh, go from here. They'll give it to him again. That's a Smith. He'll fight forward to the 35-yard line, pick up of about four yards. The initial stop. Looks like Cease and Schauber, among others, in on that play. They'll put it just across the 35. Second six, six Jeff, uh, brings up a uh, passing or running down, so let's see what we do here. Again, eye formation of three wide receivers. They'll give to the fullback. Hit very hard after a short gain. Chris Wilson makes the first contact. They'll get about three yards to the 38, almost the 39-yard line. Wilson along with Schauber in there again, uh, in on the play. So a nice job in there by Schauber. Obviously a uh, very important down here for the uh, Monroe Central defense. Third down and, and yeah, about three. We're inside four minutes remaining in the first half. Again, three receivers 
wide for Magnolia and Bax will be in the eye. Option keeper by the quarterback Mason. He's hit and wrapped up. And we'll check the spot out here. Thought he got a very kind spot on that play, Jeff. Very generous spot for the Magnolia, and the officials will take a look at this. Jeff, this I is did, very close. Jeff, I did notice uh, Magnolia squeezer splits clear down, and the uh, quarterback in the round didn't have to go that far, and uh, he's able to turn it up soon. But like we said there, he got a very kind spot. It's I very still close. believe he's a little short. And we'll see if they put the chains down. And he has the first down by three quarters of the length of the football. I missed that one, Jeff. I still can't believe he gave him that much. Uh... We won't tell Lance that, so that won't count in your in your competition against Lance as the year progresses. See, on Saturday morning, he's still at work, so he's probably not tuned in to watch yet. I'll admit, Jeff, I missed him. They'll give the ball to Smith once again. Wilson will make the play. He'll have help from Cease. But a nice gain on first down of about five yards by the fullback Smith. And that's the, the yardage that you're talking about, Andy, on, on first down that we've been looking for the Seminoles to get that's not happened thus far. Good point, Jeff. Although we did have an initial hit on the line of scrimmage and again weren't able to make the play. This is a hard running back. You know, he's a senior. He's been back there before. And you know, having a dozen seniors on the team sure makes it nice if you're Magnolia. Right, Jeff. Uh, give that offensive credit for Magnolia. The pitch to Talkington, the tailback, breaks away from the tackle and he will get a couple of yards. Now marking him out of bounds at the 47. A pick of one, pick up of one. Jeff, I'm sure I saw a clip on the play that uh, led to the uh, led him to turn the corner for the uh, yardage, but uh, the was officials, not called. Officials always to tell you he turned his back into the play. Third and four. Play action fake. Mason under pressure and will go down. Chris Wilson will make the sack back at the 40 yard line. They'll put him down about the 40. Two, loss of five. Nice job by Wilson. Uh, big part of that sack was he came in under control. A lot of guys come in and uh, out of control, and quarterback ducks underneath them, but he was able to remain under control for a very big play. Linebacker blitz go game there by Coach Sherman on the defense, and it is a big play. 150 clock running before halftime. Talking to the Magnolia in punt formation. He's had one good one and one bad one. This one, there's a dandy. Conrad, fair catch, the 28-yard line. Only about a 30-yard kick, I guess, but, you know, no return. So, you know, anytime you can net 30 yards in high school ball, you know, a pretty good job by your punt team. Right, Jeff. And uh, I'll tell you what, Jeff, if you've ever tried to catch a punt, it's tough to catch a punt. And, uh, you know, give these... Uh, Apparently turns some credit, being able to make that catch under pressure. Magnolia will take a timeout. They have one remaining with 137 left in the second period. You know, uh, kind of strange that with the clock stopped using that timeout. Now they can only stop it once, you know, if they were to try to get possession back before halftime. But you, know, you want your defense set up and your, your defensive corners to, to know what may be coming here in case the Seminoles, you know, try to go deep. As we saw the big play for the 33-yard Hook up from George to Conrad on the on the previous possession. I'm not sure what we'll do here, uh, Jeff, but I'm sure that one thing Coach Acosta will tell uh, quarterback George is if it's not there, throw the ball away or take the sack. No turnovers on interceptions. Yeah, we look around the, on this very warm evening. You know, rough, what a nice turnout here tonight. You know, when you see people sitting around with short pants on, t-shirts. Now you know it's very warm on the players up here in this crowded booth where we are. I think it's about 108 degrees right now. And 
know, before we uh, get back into action here, you know, just want to, you know, congratulate, you know, and compliment, to, you know, Dale Eddy and his wife Joe and New Vision Video here on uh, some nice programming that is aired on Channel 7, you know, promoting Monroe County, you know, here this past month. You know, a couple of those have been on that I've seen, and, you know, really, really nice for the county. And hopefully a lot of people around are, are taking it, uh, making note of that and realizing you know, all the things that Monroe County has to offer. There's another one to be aired in there, Dale. We're going to give the ball to Gordon. Uh, and I believe Gordon will be caught short of the line of scrimmage. Lose a yard. Looks like Jeff did. Uh, well, as of right now, right now he's got one timeout left. So if we're trying to run the clock out here, let's take as much time as we can. George's going to throw it deep. There's Conrad. He's got him. 30 yard. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown! What a job by Adam Conrad! Unbelievable! 74 yards, what a run! And what an extension at the end! And Andy, what do you think about that play? Well, Andy hit me so hard, Dale, I think, I, I think he knocked me into you and, uh, and we probably lost it. Uh, Dale says we got nothing. And Mr. Eddy apologizes, Adam, for not catching that. But wow, what a play, 74 yards. And this is only halftime, Andy, but I'll tell you what, this may be one of the strangest football games I've ever witnessed in my life, and I've seen quite a few. I uh, caught up in the sight excitement again, Jeff. I uh, just cannot believe that uh, we talk, talk and talk about... Uh, why we do this, why we do that, and then we wonder why Magnolia's not giving their defenders any help on Conrad. You know, just he showed his speed early, and once again... You know, just when we thought that Monroe Central may be running the clock out, George airs it out. Conrad catching the ball probably at about the 40-yard line, then cut diagonally to his left to cross the field. You know, a player had an angle on him, and it looked like they were going to catch him at the, about the one or two-yard line, but, but Conrad extended out and broke the plane of the end zone. The official was right there on the goal line and had an excellent look at it and did not hesitate and signal. Monroe Central has spent their final timeout and after the missed extra point earlier, will go for two and try to get that point back. And Monroe Central leads this game with 53.8 seconds left before halftime, 12 to seven. Did, uh, did Mr. Calder get that uh, get that film? George wants to throw. Quick out for Wilson. He's in. The extra point is good. Christopher Wilson. That looks like Andy. The same play they tried at the goal line earlier and was not able to make connection. This ball was thrown right there. Wilson able to just break the plane of the end zone. And the Seminoles after failing three times down close after Magnolia turnovers, now convert uh, the big play that I think we will see many times this year and have taken a 14 to seven lead. Jeff, uh, we definitely showed character there early on when we could have got down on ourselves, you know, felt sorry for ourselves because we couldn't get the offense going. Our defense made three, four, big stands for us, able to get the ball back, and uh, that's what happens when you hang in there, and it's still only the first half, like you said, so uh, we uh, definitely still got to play football for 53 more seconds in this half before we can have any letdown. Just looking up and down the sidelines here to see if the Channel 7 cameras were still here. It's, maybe they caught that play, but I think they've already departed. You know, So when they show on the Friday Night News their plays of the week, we can say that they, they missed one. Definitely, Jeff. Uh, he must have ran uh, over 100 yards downfield and across field for that score. All right, can't allow a break, uh, breakdown here on special teams. Now and allow for a big 
return. Magnolia does have one timeout remaining. Joris's kicks a line drive. A lineman will take the ball on about the 25-yard line and be dropped at the 33. And this post is right in the middle here, and I really do not see who made the play. Number 11, Josh Ishii, we believe, was in on that play. Number 50, Tim Sims on the kickoff return. I don't know if you mentioned, Jeff, but uh, another nice play on special teams. Very important. So now we can probably look for Mason to try to go up top here with 48 seconds remaining. He has receivers spread out all over the field, and he'll sprint to the left. And he'll go on a quick out. It'll be complete, and it'll be short of the first down. High school ball, Jeff. Uh, clock does start on a first down. Stop on a first down, but that was not a first down, so keep that clock running. And we know he's got one timeout left. Inside 30 seconds, and Mason will spike the ball. And bring up third and a yard. 26 seconds left. Are we ever going to make it to halftime? But based on that last play, I guess it was well worth the wait. Coach Mark Batten yelling out instructions to his quarterback, Mason. You know, because you know, the officials were a little, little tardy getting the ball ready for play there because that was not a timeout. That was just a spiked ball. So they, they probably really did a favor for the Blue Eagles right there. Third down, and you know, they need to get the first down, Magnolia does which will stop the clock. Mason will run a sneak and get about five yards. Down. 22 seconds left. Clock stops while they move the chains. Magnolia still with that timeout left. Ball on the 48-yard line. Mason sprints to the right, wants to throw, complete, Natale at the 38 yard line, first down. Nice play uh, by number 11 and nice pass by Mason out here in the flat, using his hands to make the play and getting out of bounds for a nice game. So uh, like I said Jeff, uh, we still had to play ball for the rest of this half and uh, with 11 seconds left and one time out they still can uh, go to the middle of the field. 39 yard line is where the officials marked Magnolia out of bounds. Mason drops, wants to throw. He's going to cross the middle, incomplete. Double coverage by Shoemaker and Sam Miller and also Conrad was there. 6.6 6 seconds remaining and Magnolia still has that timeout left. You're right, Jeff, but uh, maybe look, look to throw the ball in the end zone this play, so uh, let's make sure we get guys deep and uh, don't let anybody behind you. Four-man rush will be by Dan Miller, Randy Seifert, Nate Schauber, Aaron Cease. Josh Ishii is the deep safety, and he's about 18 yards off the ball. And Magnolia will now use that last time out. You mentioned the front line there, Jeff. Uh, if they are going to throw the ball in the end zone, uh, takes a while to get there so if we get a rush on the quarterback uh, I'll definitely uh, put some pressure on him and help our chances. Well with only six seconds on the clock you know it's basically a a goal to go situation for Magnolia as they try to get to the end zone here because as we said earlier if the ball's caught in the field of play and the tackle is made you know that 6.6 .6 seconds is probably going to expire. It's going to take a while for me to, to stop and, and try to think of everything that's taken place you know, in this first half. You know, it seems like such a long time ago when Magnolia drove the length of the field with their opening possession and scored, and the thinking then was, boy, this could be a long night. But the Seminoles have showed unbelievable bounce back and resiliency and, and made a couple of plays, you know, both offensively and defensively, you know, to take a 14-7 lead. And when this half expires... And if Magnolia doesn't get to the end zone, then you can watch. And I would say that every one of those Seminoles will be sprinting off this field. We might look for a uh, some sort of trick play here, maybe, Jeff. I don't know if 
he'll try something like this or want to show something like this early in the first half, but uh, let's be aware of that. Mason steps up. He's wrapped up, and it's halftime. Randall Seifert on the sack. And what a first half. We are at halftime, and as we said, there are the Seminoles. They're sprinting off the field, and there are many Magnolia players at a little bit slower pace, as they probably cannot believe that they're in the short end of this score. But it is halftime, and the score is Monroe Central, 14, Magnolia 7. When we come back, we'll see. Growing to serve you and your family, Dr. Jeffrey Snyder has expanded his practice to include Dr. Jay Seidler and nurse practitioner Carol Bell Shoemaker. Jay, a 77 Woodsfield High School graduate, and Carol, class of 67, are both thrilled for the opportunity to come back home. Dr. Snyder's office is the only practice in Monroe County with Saturday hours till noon, plus extended hours till 6 p.m. on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Appointments are encouraged, but walk-ins are welcome at Dr. Snyder's office. A good football team works together, helping each other to do their best. A good insurance company works together too, showing you the best coverage for you and your family. A winning football team shares the glory. The running back needs those blockers to make that long run to the end zone. A winning insurance agency represents several companies, so you have personally designed coverage to take you wherever you need to go. The Monroe Central Seminoles have a winning tradition, and F.W. Shoemaker has a winning tradition of service, integrity, and customer satisfaction. Two local traditions that keep on going.
special with the fresh foods from Respex. We get it fresh. Ready to begin the second half. If memory serves me right, you know, many, many hours ago when this game started, Andy and stuff, the, the Magnolia Blue Eagles 
returned the kick. So now the Seminoles will get the ball to start the third quarter. You know, not a lot of offense other than a couple big completions to Adam Conrad by Michael Jors. But the important thing is the Seminoles finally able to get 14 points on the board after not taking advantage of some early Magnolia turnovers. You know, it looks like, you know, Monroe Central got about 120 yards net. And most of that comes on those two big completions to Conrad. But the defense has done a good job. And let's also point out, you know, that after the first early first quarter ejection of, of T.J. Stevens, Dan Miller comes in defensively and Sean Aidey offensively, and they must be doing all right. Right, Jeff. Uh, ask a lot of these uh, young kids to step it up, especially in a big opener like this, and they've been able to uh, do a fine job thus far for us. Good kick. Conrad will take it down to 12. Up the middle to about the 35. Looked like he had some yardage. All of a sudden it was shut off. So Conrad out there put him down at the 36-yard line, it looks like. Number 10, I believe, was the tackler, Jonathan Kemp, another sophomore. Uh, you know, the Seminoles also uh, with a, a big sophomore group they think a lot of, and Magnolia thinks uh, uh, very highly of their sophomore group. All right, Jeff, number of 10th uh, graders on the roster this year for the Blue Eagles. The wishbone for the first time tonight is the Seminoles line it up and pound Wilson inside near the 40-yard line. Pick up of about four yards. Uh, Jeff, nice quick hitter there. Uh, got his feet going, got upfield. And I didn't say it this time. And maybe that's a good thing because we was able to get positive yardage on first down. The big test for the Seminoles here in the second half is, you know, they'll need to line it up and run the ball, you know, with this lead. You know, a lot of football left to be played. George gets pressure from the backside and be sacked. The number three is Talkington. He'll hit George from behind and drop Michael George for a loss of about seven yards. Second time tonight, I believe, that George has been sacked. And uh, we just spoke of uh, our offensive line play. Uh, this time we weren't able to keep him out. But uh, you'll have mistakes like that with some of the younger linemen. Just have to shake it off. Come back and uh, line it up again. Conrad wide left, wide slot with Yoho, the slot man. Pressure again by Joris, and he'll come down once again. Back at the 32, a loss of a yard. I'll bring up fourth down, Jeff, and uh, Magdalene defense coming out a little pumped up. After giving up yardage on first down, able to stuff the Seminoles, two consecutive plays. So uh, very important here for a good snap and a good punt by the punter, uh, Gabe Gordon. And put a lot of pressure right back on that Seminole defense that, since that opening possession, has performed extremely well. Snaps a little low, but Gordon gets it and gets the kick away over to the side, and it will hit and go nowhere. Mason will pick it up and be brought down at the 40-yard line. Excellent coverage on the play. Cease and Dan Miller. And after a while now, as we've seen many times in the year, Andy, that the white jerseys with the red numbers and a little bit of dirt on them, it becomes very, very hard to read. All right, Jeff. But, uh, very important here on first down defensively to uh, set the tone early in the second half. They'll give to the tailback. He'll get to the outside. Conrad will save the touchdown at the 45-yard line. Looked like trap play out there, Jeff. He's able to uh, seal back the defensive end and big hole for big yardage for the Blue Eagle offense. The sophomore number three, Talkington, has filled in for the Blue, De Blue Eagles injured starting back, Blatt, and has performed very well. And he'll get the ball again. Seifert will make contact after a short game. Jeff looked like the same play, uh, just went to the other side that time. Still too much yardage on first down. Seifert. 
41 yard line pickup of about three call it second and seven which you really need to keep the Blue Eagles off the board on this possession now as it looks like they are putting a little something together Mason will sneak it short gain stop by the middle of the Seminole line that has to be Shoemaker and Wilson among others I would guess uh, Mason must have seen something when he got up to the line of scrimmage and uh, he was probably given the uh, okay to, to take it if he seen he had something so uh, if you're wondering why they ran a quarterback sneak on second down that's probably why ball will be at the 38 yard line third down and a little more than three and in all likelihood four down territory backs in the eye Mason wants to throw has some pressure steps away from the pressure well now will be wrapped up and dropped Sam Miller along with Schauber see uh, Salso. Good job uh, by the Magnolia quarterback to get back to the line of scrimmage. That uh, he's able to uh, keep in from getting the first down. Fourth down now from the 38. They'll give him back to the line of scrimmage. Basically no gain on the play. Fourth down now and about three and a half, four yards. Jeff looks like here that Magnolia is pretty confident in their defense, uh, hoping to pin the Seminole offense back deep in their own territory. I think he was moving up on the line, but they're going to flag it now. The ball will hit and bounce inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line. And I think that tight end that we saw move on the end of the line there will probably be flagged for illegal motion. And he may have been okay at stepping up. I don't think he was set when the ball was snapped. Right, Jeff. That's exactly what happened there. He wasn't set at snap of the ball. And we'll bring back that, what looked to be a uh, nice punt down inside the 10-yard line. But we'll bring that one back and punt again. Five yard now, a little more field to work with. You know, you're a little surprised that they decided to punt there. Well, yeah, Jeff, uh, like I said there, I think they're uh, fairly confident in their defense and uh, expect a big stop down deep in the uh, Seminoles' own territory, so they're playing the uh, field position game here. Snap, not real good, but a good job by the punter talking to it. It's going to hit and roll and roll down inside the 10. And about the same eight-yard line that they would have been without the penalty. So Seminoles backed up deep in their own territory. And they'll put the ball down. It appears first touch at about the nine-yard line. And that's where Minerva Central will take over for their second possession of the quarter. Yeah, I think very important, Andy, for the Seminoles to pick up a first down or two and get some field position at the, before they punt it away at, at worst. And if you can make a big play here and, and, and get some big yardage out of this, it would be all the better. Exactly right, Jeff. Uh, let's get started here on first down. Wilson in motion. Hand off. And not much, and the ball is loose. And Magnolia is going to pick it up and have a turnover. Jeff, uh, I think we've seen this before, except for uh, the defense, different teams are turning the ball over, so let's Leave hope it. the defense is able to respond like the Magnolia defense was able to respond after a costly mistake down deep in their own territory. The ball would be put in play by Magnolia at the 16-yard line, turnover number two for Monroe Central. The other one occurred on an interception in the end zone. Magnolia has turned it over four times. And all and five of the game, six turnovers have occurred deep in the offense's end of the field. Mason wants to throw. Swing pass out here for Talkington. He'll be hit and dropped after a short gain. Eric Brown and Dan Miller. Nice job out there uh, by the Seminole defense. Second down and eight. Ball to 14 yard line.
They'll give the bail, ball to the tailback Talkington. Chris Wilson fills the hole along with Schauber, I believe, but Christopher Wilson made a nice play after a pickup of about a yard. Third and long. Nice solid hit by Wilson filling the hole where Magnolia's had success with that play where they uh, send the block around the defensive end. There's usually been a hole, but this time Wilson able to step up and make a nice stop. Brings up third and seven. Very big third and seven play for the Seminole defense. Ball at the 13-yard line. Five wide receivers. Mason to throw. Looks to the right. Across the middle. Complete to Natalie. He's hit and probably is short of the first down. Sam Miller, Conrad. And on the play. They'll put him down very near the six. They may have to take a look at this one. Fourth down. I didn't see that, Jeff. Uh, looked to me like he threw in some coverage there, but... A lot, of, a lot of pressure in there, a lot of traffic in there, and the hit was made and just short of the first down, but it was a nice grab by the receiver, Natalia, in all that traffic. Fourth down and very short. And obviously Magnolia will go for it. So in this position on the field, the six-yard line, Mason will try to run the sneak. He's stacked up, but will be shoved forward to about the five-yard line, and we'll have that first down. And now Magnolia in business, first and goal at the five. Looks like the one of the backs, uh, number 40, Michael Carroll, another sophomore from Magnolia, was in there and kind of helped shove the quarterback forward a little bit to, to help him get that needed yard. Right, uh, Jeff. The uh, offensive line fired out and was uh, able to move the pile for the first down. And you start to be a little concerned here in the second half on a hot night if Magnolia's size will start wearing down the smaller Seminole lineman. Toss. Talkington. Slips down. And he'll lose a yard. He tried to cut back away from Sam Miller and went down and loses back to the six, maybe closer to the seven. Second down and goal. Uh, Jeff, uh, I do have to wonder sometimes you get the ball down close like this while you throw the ball backwards to try to get the ball forward whenever they've had success earlier with just uh, some sort of power game. So uh, let's look for Magnolia to, to run the ball straight ahead this play, but, but I may be wrong because they got twins left. A lot of people wide. Mason spinning left. Will tuck it under and try to run and get back maybe to the line of scrimmage. Seifert once again made, helping make the play and he had some help. They'll get back to about the six it looks like. Third down. Nice play defensively by the defensive end for Monroe Central. Brings up third and goal. And a lot of times that defensive end doesn't make the tackle over there, but he can turn the play back in and be just as important as the guy that made the play. Exactly right, Jeff. He can play all game and not make a tackle and still do an excellent job. We get a flag. And we see Seminoles clapping their hands. We get a dead ball, a legal procedure, Magnolia. In years past, Jeff, the uh, Magnolia offense, if you gave them a little bit more room to operate, uh, kind of scared you. So uh, we'll see what the case is here. We have a wide out and Kerr to the right. Conrad will defend him. And a wide out to the left. Mason pump fakes. Going to the corner of the end zone. Has a man. Incomplete. And it looked like the defender, Conrad, may have temporarily been beaten on the play, but was able to recover, and that's what speed will do for you. Right, plus uh, I believe the ball was underthrown a bit, Jeff. An excellent job, though, by Conrad to get back and make that play, and they'll force Magnolia into a field goal situation. They have a very good kicker. Uh, they got to be running out of time on the play clock. 
Let's see if they're able to get this and off in time. They'll put the ball down at the 17, 27 yard line. Clock inside, five seconds. They get the snap off, it's a little bit high, the kick is down, and no good! Wide left. Seminoles dodge one more bullet. They'll take over at the 20-yard line. Now at 3.06 remaining in the third quarter. Just what will happen next? <laughs> uh, nice strong leg by the Magnolia kicker. From here, Jeff, it looked good, but uh, did go wide left. So Looks we'll like take over there from the... Uh, 20-yard line. Looks like the Seminole fans are giving the officials a little help down there, but that uh, goal post, you know, on that wide left, they just wanted to make sure that he saw it the same way. But now at the 20-yard line, we'll get motion by Eric Brown. Magnolia faking the blitz. We'll get a little quick toss outside. And here's a little running room. Across the 40-yard line. 50, 40, 35-yard line. Christopher Wilson, first down and a nice block out on the quick toss yeah. and a super cut back by Wilson that will be 44 yards by Christopher Wilson and if nothing more that is some big field position excellent run by Christopher Wilson and I might add a good solid young man always able to count on him and uh, he delivers here early in the third quarter Check, uh, check, late with, the third uh, quarter. check with Coach Singleton down there and see who probably uh, threw that block, uh, the tackle. This is Aaron Brown getting his first varsity carry of the season and get a yard. Uh, Jeff and I tried to find out who sprung Wilson on the last play, but uh, we'll give credit to one of the Seminole linemen. And uh, Jeff, I can't remember... Uh, the last time we've been so deep in the backfield uh, number of uh, different numbers in the central or under the central backfield well, already this evening on a night like this too with the, as warm as it is anytime you can get a person out of there for a play or two and I'm sure Brown was in to give Wilson a breather on that play after his long run George wants to throw across the middle intended for Yoho but it was incomplete couldn't tell if it might have been tipped or not, but it is incomplete. Third down and nine. So right. after the big first down run for the yardage of Monroe Central offense, uh, not able to move the ball, brings up third and long. But you're trying to look in another direction other than Conrad's, which uh, I'm sure Adam Conrad is going to have a lot of traffic. We're going to get a stoppage of play. The officials will stop the clock and get together. And not real sure what they're talking about here, but... The official on the far side, which is the seminal side of the field, you know, come running in, so uh, you know, your guess is as good as mine. George, pressure on the blitz. Got to get rid of it, and it's incomplete. And that may be a good job there of unloading the ball you know, with the pressure and not taking the loss. Right, Jeff. As I looked downfield, nobody was open. Uh, he had pressure. He threw the ball where either the central receiver could get it or no one could. So at that point of the game, uh, he did the right thing, and we'll try to pin the uh, Eagle offense back deep in their own territory probably most importantly throwing the ball where it could not be intercepted as you say so Gabe Gordon will go in punt formation ball at the 35 yard line and helping to pin Magnolia and Magnolia return men have not done a real good job of fielding the ball back there close this is not a real strong kick but it's going to hit and will roll dead at about the 15 yard line uh, only about a 20 yard net punt but still yeah, that's better than kicking it into the end zone as Magnolia will start at the 15-yard line. Right, Jeff. You, uh, you've you got to believe that Gordon's got the leg to get it in the end zone. So 15-yard uh, line gives us that five-yard advantage. 
And I also think, Andy, you know, people don't realize how hard it is to stand back there and kick the ball when you're trying to angle it to a side. Right. You know, you, you don't practice that very much, so that's, that's, that's a hard job to do. We're going to get an official's timeout with 126 remaining in period number three, Minerva Central leading Magnolia 14-7. After the officials time out to let the teams go to the sideline for a break. We've seen the officials do that a couple times tonight. Magnolia will start at their own 15-yard line. They'll run the tailback, Talkington. And he's not able to get outside at all. Dan Miller able to make a play. And, and Dan Miller has really done a nice job stepping up tonight and, and taking over. You know, after the Seminoles were forced to move some personnel around. And no gain on the play. You just can't say enough about you know some of the plays this Seminole defense has had. You know, still when you only lead by seven points, you know you're one play away from being tied. That's a good point, Jeff. So uh, no rush plays, no letdowns. Keller on a little reverse will get outside. Cease who originally got caught down inside. They're going to say the ball is down. Cease recovers and makes the tackle. Force. Seemed like he may have, have knocked the ball loose. They'll put it down at the 24-yard line. First time we've seen a little counter or reverse play by Magnolia tonight. Uh, Initially, uh, Cease was uh, there. I thought he might make the play, but uh, he was able to turn the quarter for a nine-yard game. We've reached the end of the third period. And I'll tell you what, Andy, there's some tired young men out there and 12 more minutes to play. But, you know, Seminole fans like what they've seen. Monroe Central 14, Magnolia 7. From a deck to a complete house, Woodsfield True Value has the lumber and building materials for contractors or do-it-yourselfers. Before you go out of town, bring your plans into Troy and Mike for a free estimate. We think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Delivery is available for your project materials, too. From lumber and siding to shingles, windows, insulation, and cabinets, Woodsfield True Value is your source for building materials and building packages. So give Troy or Mike a call today at Woodsfield True Value. Doctors Eva Giro and Bob Paul Ardelli are happy to be living and working in our community. Specializing in primary care as well as internal medicine, both doctors are accepting new patients. With a vision of serving in a small rural area, the doctors visit nursing homes and will refer you to the hospital of your choice. Thank you for welcoming us into your community. We look forward to meeting your medical needs. If you need a doctor, call Marietta Healthcare Physicians at 472-0712. Fourth period about to get underway. Seminoles leading by seven points. Magnolia on their own 24-yard line, third down in a yard. You would expect to see a quarterback sneak by Mason. We've seen that several times tonight. Will not. They'll give it to the tailback. And I don't know. That's very close. Shoemaker on the tackle. They're going to have to take a look at this, Andy. But you know, I, you know, with the success they've had on the quarterback sneak, you know, you would have thought that they give the ball to the tailback. You know, he gets a, about a yard. We'll see if that was enough. All right, Jeff. Just when you think you uh, figure this game out, first down by the nose of the football or less. So the clock will wind as we are just underway in period number four. Okay, Jeff, uh, still in a good situation here. Uh, still got them down on their own 25-yard line. Mason sprinting to the right. Wants the throw. Runs into Randall Seifert and then runs into Tyler Shoemaker and then runs into a whole lot of other white shirts. 
Seifert able to break through, uh, went a little bit high on the quarterback. He was able to break loose by uh, the Seminole defense, was able to uh, finish him off. Good initial play by Seifert, but I'm sure he'd like to have that one back. And Because uh, uh, after the initial hit, he's able to come back upfield. With, with losses and sacks and everything else. I, I have the Magnolia quarterback, Mason, with 13 carries for the night with a net of one yard. So he wants to throw. They'll try to swing it out here for Talkington. Incomplete. Incomplete Eric Brown. The nice draw by the senior uh, Eric Brown out there. Right on top of the play. Third and 12. If you can make this big third down play and force Magnolia to punt, you know, then you'll need to see the Seminoles maybe get a little bit of something out of the running game, which we've only seen from one play tonight, to chew some time. Talking, or, uh, Mason wants to throw, pressure, now he's going to run. Side steps a couple people. The ball's loose. Yeah! And that's even better than a punt, Andy. A tremendous hit applied. Gabe Gordon will recover the fumble. Turnover number five by Magnolia. Yeah, I think so. yeah. Mason yeah. tried to turn away from Shoemaker there, and somebody else came up and really made a big stick. Ball popped loose, and Gordon got it in the air. I'm not sure who it was either, Jeff, but we talk about Magnolia mistakes. Now, that was obviously a forced turnover by a nice, solid, hard hit by the Seminole defense. And uh, well, it looked like maybe Mason was going to be able to scramble and get enough for the first down, but not to be. Joris back into center. Wants the throw, steps away. Get the block here now. Going to try to run. He'll get some yardage to the 28-yard line. And, and pretty good job by Michael Joris getting to the outside and turning what looked like negative yardage into positive. Uh, nice job by Gabe Gordon after uh, there wasn't anything there for Joris. He's able to lead Joris around in, make a little seal block here for a uh, three-yard gain. So second down now, and at this point in time, positive yardage and clock running. Exactly right, Jeff. And uh, and timeout, Monroe Central. You know, here at Magnolia, you have the play clocks in both end zones, and at the last second, it looked like Michael Joris realized that the clock was running down and was able to get the timeout and save that five-yard penalty. You know, I think our main man up in the booth here, Jerry Calder, saw that out and. Uh, was able to get the uh, timeout. <laughs> Jer Jerry Carter filling in filming tonight misses no nothing. And we might add that is full time Swiss Hills guidance counselor Jerry Carter. <laughs> yeah, how about that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're having a little more fun, Andy, than we did in that opening possession. And speaking of Swiss Hills, we might add the new Swiss Hills construction trades teacher, Andy Shoemaker. And congratulations on that job. You've survived your first week in the field of education. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, my dad, I got five senior Bellsville Blue Devils in my class. Uh, that'll be interesting this year. But we're glad to to have Andy in the school district. So Joris, we have a lot of people to the left. Joris under a lot of pressure and a lot of people coming from Magnolia and you know, we've got to keep some people out of there as this game wears on. Back to the 30 four yard line third down and 12 
We did line up in a strange formation that time, Jeff. But obviously we're, we weren't able to uh, confuse the uh, Eagle defense because they seem to be right on top of the play for a five-yard sack. So now third and long. Magnolia will loosen up the defense just a little bit. Front line still coming hard. We're throwing it to the corner of the end zone. Kenny Robinson, intended receiver, double coverage. Fourth down. And we'll see now at the 34-yard line, but my guess is, Andy, that uh, we'll punt it away. Oh, uh, I think uh, and try I'm to sure get a little bit of field, Jeff. Yeah. A little bit of field position. Defense has been playing well. The negative to that play is the fact that that stops the clock with 8.56 remaining in the game. Gordon, once again, punt formation. The snap is good, no pressure. He'll try to pooch it down to the side. It'll hit at the 10 and bounce and go out of bounds at about the one yard line. Thank goodness for that nice thick grass. Well, we well talked about done. Gordon earlier, Jeff, and uh, able to get her done again. And now you force Magnolia to go 99 yards. And, you know, and if they would just cooperate and maybe turn it over one more time. But you know, that ball hit just inside the 10 and then took almost a 90 degree bounce as it rolled you know, that last hop to the right and going out of bounds at the 1. And you couldn't get down there and place it any better than this. We might look for quarterback sneak right here, Jeff. No. Coach Batten going for the big play from his own end zone in the tally. And Gabe Gordon, excellent coverage. Right on the play, Gordon. I'm sure uh, the central defense was aware that may, they may try anything at this point. So, uh, seem to be ready for that. So now we'll see on second and ten, Magnolia on their own one yard line. And there's that sneak. And stacked up by the center of that Seminole line. Very little yardage. They may give him out not only to about the two. bringing up third and nine and in the center of that line you know it has to be you know Tyler Shoemaker tackles Schauber and Seifert linebackers Sam Miller and Chris Wilson you know doing a fine job in, in the middle so now defensive backs there is Gordon defending to the right Conrad the defender to the left Mason in the end zone wants to throw pressure complete and it will be a first down to Keller out about the 14 yard line big play by the uh, Magnolia offense they was able to roll right to their right and was able to do a good job keeping the Seminole defense off the quarterback for a big first down for the Magnolia Offense. Now, big from their standpoint is that they keep possession. They would hate to have to, to give it up, you know, that deep in their own territory. Mason wants to toss it. Talkington. He'll be hit. Breaks a couple of tackles. He'll get near the 24-yard line, and very close to another first down. And he'll be just short. You know, very, very important, though, Andy, for the Seminoles to make a stop at some point in this time and not let Magnolia get the length of the field and get it into the end zone because the clock you know, will then become a, a very much a factor in the game. But you would sure like to see Monroe Central get another possession with the lead. Mason sprinting to the right, wants to throw. Lobs it downfield. There's a turnover. Conrad running room down the sideline. He's going to try to come across field. We have a flag down. So 
This is all for naught. There's another clip. Adam Conrad is to the end zone. A lot of flags on the play. All of them, all of them are going to be clipping calls. <laughs> that is an that interception. That is a good point. Jeff, uh, I never, <laughs> I never could understand. You get a big play like that, you hit somebody in the back. But regardless of all of that, we still get the ball. Supposed possession turnovers. But I, I look out there, Andy, I think there, there are at least five penalty flags. And I don't know, did you realize officials must carry two because I think the one guy threw two flags on the play. But, uh, you know, multiple clipping calls. The, the furthest one back, you know, which was the first one, will be the penalty, which will be assessed. That'll move the ball back to the 40. We'll see where they place it here. looks like the 43-yard line in Magnolia territory, but the Conrad interception will stand. Monroe Central has possession now at 636, and this is where your offensive line needs to be able to grind it out and get a couple of first downs. Right, get some time off that clock. Right, as a senior leader on the offensive line, I look for him to run Seaford's side, and hopefully the line is a little pumped up about getting a turnover, so let's see if we can move the ball here. They'll toss it once again to Wilson. It worked before. It'll work again. First down, 30-yard line, Chris Wilson. Maybe just 13. A, just a basic quick toss play, Jeff. Hey, we'll get up field for nice yardage. Well, we saw that play earlier in the third quarter, you know, where, uh, you know, and that was also to the left, Andy. You know, before it went for 44 yards in a first down. That one goes for 13 in a first down. And I didn't see the formation and stuff there. I know the, you know, but uh, usually on that quick toss, the tackle pulls and makes the big block. Right, and we talked about that senior Seifert. That's the tackle that pulled and led the play. We'll try it the other side and break a tackle and have trouble getting back to the line. That's Eric Brown. He's going to go back to the 33-yard line. Loss of three. I'm sure uh, the Magnolia defenders were uh, told to watch for the same play, maybe the same play the other side, and they were there for the three-yard loss. Yeah, one more first down sure would be, be big here. Clock now at five minutes, 30 seconds remaining in the game. Seminoles leading by seven points. George drops. Quick out for Yoho. And not real, not real well thrown there by Michael. It's probably yeah. a good thing it wasn't, Jeff, because he looked like he was covered. And maybe in that case, maybe it was a good throw because he may have uh, thrown that away from the defense intentionally. So, right, so Jeff, third down, 13. We've uh, not seen a screen play tonight, Jeff. Maybe it's a good time. Screen or draw. George, once again, the shotgun. George wants to throw. Going downfield for Connor, for Ishii. Not able to make the play. Looked like there was some contact down there, but no flag. You kind of like to see that looking, you know, in another direction other than Conrad's, as I'm sure he has lots of attention over there. But the issue was well defended. Uh, you know, number 11, I believe, the defender also on that play. Uh, but it looks like we have cramps, you know, by the Magnolia player down. That's number 14, Matt Keller, who was the defender on that play. And, you know, last five minutes and 12 seconds on this hot night, you know, it wouldn't surprise me to see, you know, quite a bit of this, you know, as far as cramps. And you, you can't, no matter how good a shape some of these young men are in, you know, this is a tough plan tonight. That's right, Jeff, because uh, I'd say it's around 10 o'clock right now. Been playing football for two and a half hours, and uh, we've not had this situation this year yet. So I'm sure you're right. 
I think it may cool down here in this booth just a little bit. I think it might be down to about 104 in here now, uh, down from the 108 that we had in the first half. You know, it is a warm one. They're still working on the Magnolia player down the sidelines on those cramps. And you know, if anybody's ever gotten a cramp, I tell you, you know, that's tough to work out of there. But this gives the Seminoles a chance to go over to the sideline and get a drink. Fourth and 14, I believe we're going to see another one of those pooch punts you know, down for the corner. And if it's anywhere near as effective as the last one was, you know, we'll be in, in pretty good shape. Line of scrimmage is about the 33-yard line as they, make, as they get carried to the sideline. And Gordon will once again go in punt formation. Seminole is able to, to get one first down on that possession after the Conrad interception. And we'll see which corner Conrad tr or, uh, Gordon tries to, to get the ball to. The snap is a little low, but he picks it up, gets it off, pitches it down the middle of the field, and that's going to go to the end zone. But, you know, with the pressure of the, of the low snap, Gabe not able to really uh, sight in the corner and stuff in there. Just be glad you get that thing away, not get it blocked. You know, Magnolia will take over now at the 20-yard line, 5.05 remaining. All right, Jeff, uh, good job by Gordon just getting the punt off. And uh, any time you start down on your, your own 20-yard line, you got to be pleased. Okay, just take a team drive 80 yards late in the game. Just being able to get a low snap like that and not go to your knee to take the snap says something also because that would have given Magnolia the ball back you know, about the 45-yard line. So you know, Magnolia at the 20, 5.05 remaining. And they'll run Talkington. He'll be hit after a short game. Wilson along with Cease. pickup of about two yards. Another fine job defensively by the uh, linebacker Wilson. Brings up second and eight. And uh, we might see something different from Magnolia here because uh, clock's winding down and I don't have to start moving the ball. Mason wants to throw. He's got pressure again. He's going to be sacked once again. Schauber, I believe. And that is Nate Schauber with the sack back at the 17-yard line, loss of five. Jeff, I was watching downfield that play, and uh, they had a receiver downfield to their left, and he was covered, so the quarterback was forced to hold on to the ball. And uh, give a little credit there to the uh, secondary, and then uh, defensive line able to uh, make the play. This will be third down and about 14 yards to go. Mason sprinting to the right. They try to get him out of the pocket. He's going to run it. And that looks like Schauber once again on the tackle just across the 20. At the 22, he'll get the five yards back of the sack. But that's going to be fourth down. Another big play by Schauber there. Nice hustle running across the field. And that clock's running, Jeff. And they'll line up for a uh, punt here on fourth down. I, I think, Andy, they've, they're forced to go for it. Mason, the, now they will punt the ball. I, they're, well, almost what I thought, but just about three minutes left on that. You know, uh, maybe stay loose for a fake here, Andy. Right, Jeff. Uh, they are putting two guys back. He will punt the ball. And it's not a real good kick. That's going to hit and roll, but that's going to be fine. As though roll over near the sideline and be downed at the 48 yard line 47 yard line 249 left about a 31 yard kick i believe no return uh come very close to hitting a seminal blocker because it was, it was a very short kick but now with 249 on the clock magnolia does have three timeouts remaining and that may have weighed into the decision to kick that ball away exactly right jeff uh Central offense hasn't shown the real ability to run the ball tonight, so they're hoping for a stop, a timeout, and then another stop, and then hopefully get the ball back. Take care of it here. Force Magnolia to use those timeouts. Wishbone. Second back is Wilson. 
running room, first down, 30. A late block, Chris Wilson, touchdown, 53 yards, there are no flags. By my count, Christopher Wilson now has 110 yards on his last three carries. Chris Yoho to try the extra point. Adam Conrad to hold. Snap is good. Uh, and it looks like a fake or a maybe mishandled snap. Conrad will try to run it. Seminole touchdown 53 yards by Chris Wilson, which now you can breathe a little easier, Andy, with a 13-point lead. Short kick to the 20. This is Goddard, one of their tight ends, and he's going to take a shot near the 40-yard line. Jeff, can't say enough about the hard-hitting Seminole defense tonight. Uh, still here late in the fourth quarter. Uh, come and play football tonight. Well, these kids are playing on adrenaline right now, and you know they're tired and been completely wore out, but they're on the verge of really maybe, considering all the bad luck they had last year, maybe posting one of the biggest Monroe Central wins in quite some time. Uh, definitely, Jeff. I uh, looked at the paper earlier this morning, and although I don't take a lot of, uh, I don't think much of the these predictions in these papers, but I noticed all four predictions went for Magnolia. So nine, big, out of big ten, nine out of ten people in the times later. Big upset in the Valley tonight. But we still got two minutes to play, so uh, I don't want to speak too soon. Let's play defense here. Goddard gets the completion on the catch from Mason. Inbounds, five-yard pickup. Clock running. Magnolia still with three timeouts left, but they need to score twice. And Mason will go down again. And Nate Schauber has been all over this field. Can't say enough about him, Jeff. Uh, had him last year a little bit as I filled in and taught a little bit. Good kid. Works hard. Gives everything he's got. And you can see here in the fourth quarter, he got himself into some good shape conditioning-wise. Magnolia will spend one of their timeouts. And I'll tell you, you know, Andy, as we looked at this game and we talked during the week, you know, with the size of Magnolia, the experience, a lot of people back from a team that won seven games, about a dozen seniors out there. There have been some of them been starting for three years. Seminoles, even with some experience, only three seniors, very young. You know, this Seminole team had to be considered an underdog coming in here tonight. And I think have, have surprised a lot of people. And when that score hits the TV, on Friday night, a lot of people around the valley are, are going to wonder what happened or are going to think, wait, is that score a mistake? Yeah. You're exactly right, Jeff. And I might add, uh, I'm not sure when we opened up last year, but the 24th of August seems like we opened up a little bit sooner. We had two scrimmages in one week, the week before last. And uh, this is the second year that we've opened up with two games before Labor Day. But you know, it's, it's, it is very early and it is very hot. But, boy, you, you just can't say enough about these young men. And another minute and 41 seconds. I hope there's a lot of people down there to help some of these guys off the field because they deserve it. And I still go, but what I said in the first half, first half of this game had to be one of the strangest football games I have ever seen. Second half has been a little more conventional, and everything has went Monroe Central's way. Mason sprinting. Good coverage. Ooh, 
He's sacked again. So what's new? Sharbury with a piece of the pie. Uh, looks like Magnolia's not going to call a timeout here. Time winding down and fourth uh, and seven. Fourth down. Across the middle, complete. Natalie will have a first down. Natale, a nice looking receiver with his fifth catch of the night. Clock running now. Less than one minute. Mason to throw. Throws it up. Incomplete. Intended for Keller. Just kind of threw that away. Quick change of tape. Hopefully we got that last play, which was an incompletion. Second and 10, Magnolia, 47 seconds left. Mason going deep for Keller. Jump ball with Gordon, incomplete. Another nice bit of coverage by Gabe Gordon. Gabe's been there all night, Jeff. And uh, considering he's only a sophomore, excellent job. Well, Gordon, along with several of these other kids, you know, gained a lot of experience last year. You know, and even though they're young, they uh, do have that year of experience. And I know Gabe dedicated himself in the off season in the weight room and uh, working on technique, and uh, certainly paid off here early in the season. Third and ten. Mason to throw under pressure again. Interception. Tyler Shoemaker smartly goes to the ground and let's let the celebration begin. Inter turnover number seven for Magnolia. Tyler Shoemaker, I believe, has been responsible for three of those now with two interceptions and a fumble recovery. I uh, might add Tyler T. Bone Shoemaker. Nice play and smart play. Best thing to do on that's get down. We know we got the ball back. We know we can run it out, so no sense being a hero there. You like to see plays like that, Jeff. The Shoemakers are always smart players, weren't they? <laughs> but you're a very good player because you, 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 you've sealed the win there, and all you have to do you know, is go down. You don't want to run down the field and then, and, then, and then fumble the ball and let something weird happen. Believe me, we've seen enough weird stuff for one night. Who would you say the smartest one is? <laughs> Oh, I, I think without question, with his hand on my shoulder and stuff, Andy Shoemaker is definitely the smartest one I've seen. <laughs> Just make sure, make sure you tell, tell Lance that next week. <laughs> okay, Jeff. Uh, a very impressive effort tonight by the uh, Seminole defense. And up here sometimes I think we even get down on them offensively and uh, – it was. It would have been easy for them to hang their heads early offensively, but uh, you, you make an excellent point there with with Magnolia scoring early at seven nothing, you know, and turning the ball over, ball over several times, and Monroe Central kept coming up empty, but Magnolia kept shooting themselves in the foot. Finally, we converted a fourth down touchdown pass to Conrad, and then the spectacular big play there right before halftime, and the defense has been solid. You know, you know, give uh, coach. Dave Sherman, all the assistants, you know, Coach Pat Singleton back in the fold this year, uh, you know, and, you know, a lot of help over there, along with, uh, you know, up here in the booth with Coach Matt Singleton and Coach Briggs, you know, Coach Luke Shoemaker down there, um, you know, everybody there, Coach Greg Shoemaker, just, you know, a super job. Kill the clock. Formation. Joris will just take the ball, take a knee, lose two yards. Clock under 25 seconds. Magnolia will not spend a timeout. 
And folks, this game is over. The Monroe, Monroe Central Seminoles go on the road and really pull a, a major upset you know, and show that they are a team to be reckoned with. What a, a fantastic job by the Seminoles in this game. Can't say enough about them. Really proud of the young men tonight. Just uh, and you can unbelievable see, the effort. You can see the jubilation down there as the players come off the field. You know, and the coaching staff, and, and believe me, you know, the coaching staff w was was uptight the last couple of days. They're concerned about a lot of different things this day. You know, we, we Andy, we, we hate we hate to keep dwelling on a negative, but if you go back, you know, at the early stages of the ball game after the first Magnolia possession, which you know, a returning player and T.J. Stevens was ejected from the game, and that brought Dan Miller and defensively and Sean Adey in offensively and it's hard standing here to, to know exactly what kind of job those guys did but when you leave with a 20 to 7 win they must have done a great job uh, exactly right Jeff and we uh, if you notice there in the second half we were able to get our running game going a little bit and I believe uh, that's mainly because of our speed with Conrad we showed we were able to complete some passes downfield so in years past they was able to stack 10 men on line scrimmage uh, or as tonight, I think you told me, we threw 14 balls early early on in the game. So it uh, made a big difference. Yeah, and, and I think right there, too, you know, those completions, as you say, open things up. And then with the lead, that was one of my concerns. You know, could we open up and run a little bit? Chris Wilson with three great plays behind some great blocking to get some key plays, including that last game clinching touchdown. You just can't say enough. You know, great job. And, you know, you, know, you just got to feel great for these young men. You know, after all the adversity last year, you're losing the, the close games and that. They needed a game like this. And, you know, one week at a time. Next week won't be any easier. You know, Shady Side comes in for the Seminole home opener. And, and believe me, they're, they're a very good team again this year. But, you know, you know the, the emotion, you know, you know at practice this week has to be outstanding. Uh, next week, you know, I think Lance will be joining you, you know, here on, uh, on the Saturday morning replay. You know, I'll be joining the uh, WBNV radio crew on that, so bring your radio out. Uh, it's a Channel 7 game, so bring your radio, watch it on TV Friday night, watch it again Saturday morning. You know, I'm not sure who uh, Coach will pick as a couple of his players you know, to have on uh, with, with Lance and Coach on Thursday night, but I'll tell you what, a couple go big candidates you know, would be you know, Conrad and George, obviously, but I think Nate Schauber deserves some consideration. And I know Lance doing a, a, a play of the week again this year. You know, I don't know that, but I, I think there was two big candidates and stuff. Uh, you know, the, the touchdown to Conrad right before halftime and the game-clinching run by Wilson. You know, maybe uh, maybe Lance would consider co-plays of the week. But uh, that play by Conrad is going to be uh, going to be tough, you know, to, to beat. But you know, a great win, and uh, you know, we're going to take it out of here. You know, again, you know, this is Jeff Stevens. You know, thanks again to Andy Shoemaker. And it's been a long day, I know, for Dale Eddy here getting set up at the last minute in cramped quarters. But you know, hopefully we didn't miss too many plays. You know, and it just, you know, excitement. I'll tell you what, you know, what can you say? The Seminoles want to know as they go on the road and knock off a very highly regarded Magnolia team. Final score, Monroe Central 20, Magnolia 7. We'll see you next week for the home opener. The Citizens National Bank of Woodsfield, home-owned and independently operated since 1933. Your community bank. Our officers, directors, and staff are dedicated to customer and community service. We reinvest your deposit dollars locally. So remember, banking with us is not only good for you, but it's good for your community. Citizens National Bank of Woodsfield, member FDIC, equal housing lender.